When I started to write the book about 9 11, it was 2003. Now it's 2014. Uh, the, the search for truth in 9 11 is a work in progress in the sense that uh, so many things have been discovered, so many new things are discovered, and basically there is not a single truth because um, a lot of uh, forces play in this search, and some of them are not completely honest or they make mistakes so that reality and myth sometimes are mixed together. And uh, I cannot but notice that in the 9-11 truth movement, uh, it started, especially in the US, but also in Italy, see in many places, there are very big fights between the people who look for truth, which is something very strange for me, because if you're looking for truth, usually you discuss uh, friendly among people who have the same interest and try to understand together. While well, actually people fight over minor details, has been mentioned before, and uh, the whole picture gets lost. And I'm a conspiracy theorist according you know, to mainstream opinion, so I start to smell something fishy even there. there I, I feel that there is a kind of uh, tactics of uh, divide and rule, divide et impera, how the Latins uh, were used to say, uh, in order to um, avoid the, uh, the, the activities of the truth movement. So, uh, in this continuous fight for, uh, for, for, for truth, you know, you make, we, we, we really uh, risk to miss uh, the, the big picture. Uh, the search of truth of 9-11 is also an ontological problem because um, the extent of the plot and of the things that has been done is so vast and so many daring things has been done on that day uh, that uh, you cannot simply, as a normal uh, human being who has been living in a bubble of mainstream artifact reality all your life, just face it all in the same moment. So that uh, if, uh, if you, as a person who has been studying or uh, exploring the argument for years, uh, try to tell something in the Western world about that, um, you just find uh, yourself in front of a wall. Nobody's able mentally to accept that absolutely everything that they uh, know about reality is false. Why I, do I say that? Because even inside the truth movements, you have different stages of understanding of the depth of the mystification. And uh, I wrote uh, this book, which was published first in 2006, a second edition in 2007, then a Romanian edition in 2009, and an English edition in 2011. In each edition, I had to change things because I was wrong. And I probably am still wrong in many aspects, so it's very difficult to find a conclusive representation of all what happened on that day. Uh, so, now I have only one or two minutes, I just wanted in general to warn uh, from the deceptions that we all always face when we deal with this argument. Uh, and uh, it's very, very difficult to understand which they are. We may be wrong when we think we understand it. And so I just make only one example. There has been, in the early stages of the whole research, a completely delirious uh, uh, thesis, you know, that there were uh, holograms flying instead of planes. Uh, and it got a lot of attention and people are still speaking about the fact that holograms were flying on that day. Now, um, of course, every rational person would kind of dismiss this argument because it's very difficult to imagine that you can make an hologram uh, so convincing like the one that we would see in the films. But then actually there are now other new theories that uh, start to analyze another physical problem like for example how can uh, an aluminium uh, plane and aluminium wings uh, cut so thick uh, pieces of steel like the surround of the towers. You know? It's like a Coca-Cola can uh, crashing the walls of this hotel. It's not very likely. So there is something strange. Of course, the answer is not an holographic uh, uh, plane, but there is something strange in this in these pieces of very, very, very thin aluminium. It's something that you can barely almost bend with your hands. That suddenly they are stronger 
then still they can benefit. So we understand that we have probably still other things to discover about those days. And, uh, and uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, well, this is. Uh, I, I will tell you only one more uh, thing. Uh, now we all have images in our head of what happened on that day. However, uh, you may be surprised to discover that actually all the images that we have in our mind uh, were not uh, shown live. Uh, we imagine that everything happened live because the event was live. But actually, the only image which was broadcasted live in the very moment in which it happened was broadcasted only once. Only once. You can still see it because people recorded it and you can find it on the internet. But it was never broadcasted again. Whatever we saw afterwards was something else. Now you can start to think about that. Why would you show it only once? So there are still a lot of mysteries to uncover. Just Thank in order to add some spice to the discussion. Thank you very much. On this, on this point, right, uh, Roberto? <laughs> I guess it's not meant to be. <laughs> Now at this point I have absolutely to say something because I heard the verse official version of the event uh, a lot of times, but it's important that we acknowledge that there is no such thing. There is no official version of the events of 9-11. The official version changes according to the question. Um, and this is not uh, an inefficiency, this is not casual. It's not that they didn't uh, bother to write it. It's intentional because it's a matter of faith. There is no uh, concept of rationality in the whole issue. The, they know that they cannot win the battle uh, with arguments. They can only win it with authority. And people who believe authority, they will swallow everything. And actually, the fact of giving completely contradictory uh, official answers according to the question which is put uh, is part of the of the whole operation psychological operation because uh, you train the people who want to believe you to believe you even when you become completely absurd in your arguments so basically once you invest your belief in what they say uh, they just stretch uh, the, I mean, uh, the, the, the gap between um, the, the, the myth and the reality, so that finally you really are believing in Santa Claus. I mean, uh, and once you are at that point, you are rationally unrecoverable, because it would be a devastating for you to discover that you were really uh, believing in uh, little elves. Okay. So, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Thank, thank you. Um, so, uh, oh, yeah. one more sentence. Okay, go ahead. Uh, if you put together different answers, official answers to given to problems regarding the Pentagon, you have a plane who has been descending uh, at the, uh, at, with a maneuver of a, of a military plane, uh, 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 then flying at 800 kilometers per hour at 30 meters of height, uh, regardless of turbulences, would crash against uh, the Pentagon creating a very little hole, leaving no debris outside, and which would be explained because the plane completely pulverized. And then the... Okay, that's a wrong sentence. was so <laughs> It's a very long sentence. I am a specialist. Uh, I'm Italian. So all the, all, the dust, all the dust was magically sucked into this little hole where it would uh, dig holes through five consequence of very strong concrete walls, leaving a final big hole in, in the ice, melting in the process, evaporating, and then disappearing completely. Okay, <laughs> thank, thank you, Robert. It's an official version. Thank you, Robert.